Hey, welcome back folks. This is Bob here. If you haven't seen the two previous videos I did on flushometers, I'm going to link them up in the description box below this video. And in this final video on flushometers, we're going to be talking about reasons this may not flush when you hit the handle, reasons why it continues to flush, doesn't shut off, reasons why it bangs, reasons why it may leak from up top, reasons why it may leak from the handle, and the eventual pitfalls you're going to run into. So if you're interested in knowing about this puppy, stick around. I will be right back. Okay, so if you're new to this video, I just want to say I did two videos prior to this one. One about a leaking vacuum breaker on a flushometer and one about water hammer on a flushometer. So if you haven't seen those, I will leave links to those videos below this one. But to those of you who are trying to figure out why your flushometer will not flush, I did this little illustration just to show you the internal workings and basically how they work. And essentially, you have the incoming water that comes into the flushometer, and you have the brass metering stud there on the left side. And once this is in the unflushed state, meaning it's completely filled with water, you have equal pressure up top, equal pressure on bottom. When you hit that handle, whether you pull it up or push it down, you knock that piston over, and it allows the water in the upper chamber to go down the hole toward the bowl. And as that water releases, the pressure drops. And because the pressure is dropping on top, the incoming water pressure forces the diaphragm up and the bowl flushes. At the same time, through the brass metering stud, through a timed method, because they have little holes in them, and depending upon the model of toilet you have, 1.6, 1.2 weight, 3.5, you know, that's going to fill up either slowly or, or, or a little more quickly and start to shoot water back up into the upper chamber until it forces the diaphragm and the piston back down again. And, and that completes the flushing cycle. But oftentimes things happen. Oftentimes that handle wears out. The tip of the handle wears out and it can't reach the piston. So you'll hit it, you'll pull it, you'll kick it, and the flushometer won't flush. Or you'll hit that handle and it'll uh, hit the piston and you release it and you get this horrendous bang, in which case you have a problem with the diaphragm. The diaphragm probably has a hole in it. Or you'll have the case where you'll hit that handle, it'll flush, and it won't stop flushing. A lot of times what happens is that brass metering stud, it, I mean, is literally the size of a pinhole. You get dirt in there and the upper chamber can't fill up with water to equalize the pressure, the flushometer is just going to keep running and running and running. Or the diaphragm gets dirty, you get some stuff on it, it doesn't seat well, it doesn't sit down on the seat. There are several reasons these valves may fail. Now, truth be told, you don't find these valves in most one and two family residences. Uh, you'll find them more in a multi-unit situation, in which case I don't think you'd be working on your own flushometer. In cases like that, they have superintendents that'll tend to stuff like that. But I know that in a lot of buildings, either the people, they don't have good help or the people don't want to wait for the super and they want to fix things themselves. And so they'll go ahead and attempt to fix things. And, uh, you know, I encourage anyone that's got a little mechanical ability why not? I mean, because a lot of the stuff is really not that hard. But be that the case, be that as it may, we're going to jump down to the bench. I'm going to walk you through some of the processes or some of the reasons this thing may fail. This way, when you run across it or you're experiencing that particular problem in your case, you can go ahead and have a little confidence in taking this apart. So I will see you on the workbench. All right, here we are once again, folks, on the bench with the flushometer. And for those of you who didn't see the two previous videos I did about flushometers, one about the vacuum breaker tailpiece and one about why this bangs when you hit this handle, I will link those videos up in the description box below. Anyway, this is a Rex slash Coin Delaney flushometer. These were pretty famous back in the 70s. I mean, they're pretty old puppies, but there are still thousands of them out there in apartment units in my service area and I would assume around the country 
And I guess the reason I did these videos on the flashometers is I didn't see too much information on YouTube about it. So this is the reason I did this. Now, truth be told, these are found mostly in multi-unit buildings. You don't find too many of them in a one or two family dwelling. So as far as the repairs go, they have superintendents that do most of the maintenance work. But there are people who don't want to let the supers in their house and they don't want anybody coming into their apartment, so they want to make their own repairs. And so if you're one of those people, I'm going to walk you through uh, some of the reasons this thing may not work. And so probably, in my opinion, the number one reason or the number one complaint that I have gotten over the years when I worked in these multi-unit buildings repairing and replacing these things was that the flushometer won't flush. I hit the handle, nothing happens. No matter what I do, they pull it up. They push it back, they pull it forward, and the flushometer will not flush. Well, that's a function of the handle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and show you the inside of this thing to give you a better understanding of, of, of why it doesn't flush. And, and I'm going to pull this handle out and show you the end of the handle. But if you're going to work on a flushometer yourself, especially in a multi-unit building, first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to... Now, this may or may not have a cap on it, the one you have. This may just be the shutoff valve. Some of them have a screw right here in the middle, and this is just a knurled handle, and you can turn it clockwise. You turn it all the way clockwise until it stops, it's off. In this case, this is a, a screw, set screw, so you can turn this all the way clockwise until it completely shuts, and then you want to relieve the pressure inside the unit before you even think about opening this. And then you're going to want to hang out for a minute or so and make sh absolutely sure with your ear that you don't hear any water passing. Because if you're in a multi-unit building and there is water passing, you do not want to remove this head. I'm telling you that for exper from experience. I've gotten myself into quite a jam. And if these don't shut off, I immediately go down to the superintendent and I say to him, you have to shut this line down because I'm not pulling this apart unless we get 100% shut off. So that being said, we're going to remove this head. How do you remove the head? I remove the head with my spud wrench, which has no teeth on it. Or if you have a channel lock pliers with no teeth on it, that's to keep you from marking up the chrome. And once we shut it and we relieve the pressure inside, we're going to, we're going to take this head off. And simply, you, you, know, you may have to hold on to this puppy because some of them are in there quite, quite tight. And it's just going to be a matter of taking the head off. And, and I usually keep the handle down just to get the water drained out. Sometimes you may have water, like it'll dribble out of here, but it's not a big deal. You put a little bucket, put a towel down on the floor, and you take this head off. And then I will show you, I'm going to flip this thing forward, but I'm going to stop the camera before I do that. But real quickly, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to hit this handle. I don't know, can you see? Can you see right here? That popping up. Well, that's the plunger inside. That lifts, and when you lift that, the water leaves the upper chamber of the flushometer, drains down, relieves the pressure on top, so the pressure reduces, and then the diaphragm on bottom pushes up and, and continues or proceeds with the flushing cycle. And in a lot of cases, this doesn't happen. You'll hit this handle and nothing happens. And the reason that happens, I'll show you, is that the handle is worn. So let me stop the camera for a second. I'm going to flip this forward and we will continue. So what's supposed to happen is, when you hit this handle, it knocks the plunger up and it starts the process of the water going down this hole so that the pressure in the top of the flushometer relieves and then the Incoming water pressure forces the diaphragm up, and then the flushing cycle continues. But because the handle, I don't know if you can see in there, the handle doesn't quite reach the plunger because it's worn. So this is what's supposed to happen, but because the handle is worn, and I'm going to pull this handle out here, I'm just going to push this back a second. So I don't know if you can see, but in this particular handle here, they, they didn't always have these on here, and I, I still, 
I'm still trying to figure out why they put them on here. These are these little nylon tips they put on them. But prior to these tips, they were all brass. And what happened was from the constant knocking into the, the plunger here, constantly, constantly, not, these things actually got worn to the point where they wouldn't knock these things up high enough to relieve the water up top. So I would pull these out and you would see actually like, it almost looked like a half moon concave indentation in the handle and you would be hitting the handle and, and you could actually see it wouldn't move the plunger. Now, let me say this. This is probably the uh, number one reason a flushometer won't flush when you hit the handle because it just doesn't reach the plunger to knock it up. But there are several design handles out there. This is one of them. Uh, there's been probably three versions that I'm aware of. When I first started, um, they had a compression nut over here, right about here. There was a compression nut on the end with a leather washer inside. Then there was another version where they would slip on a cone-shaped rubber washer. And this one here, which is the one I really don't like, but anyway, this is all done with a rubber washer here. And... Uh, it's just done with compression. So you can go out and you can get replacement parts for this thing. So you can go out. If this is worn out or it's all concave because it's been in there for years and it doesn't reach the handle, you can go out and get individual parts. You can get, you can get this little, I guess you would call it plunger piston. You can get the washer and uh, yeah, that's the way it works. So then you would simply slip it back in here. And then you would slip this in here. And as you screw it into the flushometer body, it, sti it stiffens. See, see, see the way this flops around? It's loose. But as you screw it into the body, it will stiffen up even if I do this by hand. And then you can see it, you could see it working there. So that's, that's the reason, if your flushometer is not flushing when you hit the handle, chances are the handle's not reaching this piston. It, it's not reaching the piston enough to lift it up and, and, and able to relieve the water up top. So you can stand there all day. Nothing's gonna happen. So the second reason I find why these won't flush is that by the time I get there and there's a call for service, somebody has removed this adjustment screw. And I find that they have gone in there and they've turned the screw down inside the head so far. I don't know if you can see it in there. That the screw is sitting up against the uh, plunger here or the piston, and even though you're hitting the handle, this is not coming up. It's not allowing the water to drain out from the top. So, reason number one, the handle doesn't reach the piston. Reason number two is somebody may have come in here and turned this thing down so far, trying to adjust the length of their flush, which which you can do, but. You know, I don't advocate you going in there and doing that yourself. This is this should be left to a, a pro who can come in there and uh, properly adjust things. Because if if you take this cap off and you start turning that screw, sometimes you're going to get water that's going to run out of here uncontrollably, and you won't be able to stop it. In the older versions, they had a nut in here with a leather washer. They had a compression nut with a leather washer where you could tighten it and stop that water from coming out. As you're looking at here, there's just a little rubber washer on there. But that rubber washer, after years and years of being in service, gets dried out. And the first one who comes in and starts turning the screw uh, discovers quite quickly that they can't get the water to stop coming out of the, the cap. And what you're going to have to do is, if that's the case, in your case, you will have to, and I am trying to look for this cap here. What did I do with it? Sorry about that, guys, but after an adjustment is made inside this cap, you simply are supposed to put the little cover back on again. But if you start turning the screw and the water starts leaking out of here, I recommend what you're going to have to do is you're going to try your best and you're going to have to wrap Teflon tape around this screw 
and whack it in there to get that water to stop because there'll be no other way to get the water to stop. There used to be a time when there was a, a compression nut in here with a leather washer and you were able to tighten it or you were able to replace that washer. And as you can see here, that's just a rubber washer. And if this flush armor has been sitting there for any number of years and you're the first guy to come along and try to adjust the screw, I guarantee you the water's gonna start leaking out of the cover uncontrollably and you get a panic and freak out. Don't freak out, go get some Teflon, wrap it around the male threads here and, and whack this in here to get it to stop. And, uh, and that'll take care of that. So the handle, not reaching the piston and somebody going in here and turning the screw all the way down to the point where this piston won't come up. So those are the reasons it won't flush. Let's talk about some of the reasons it continues to run. So this piston sits on top of a rubber washer. After a certain amount of years, the rubber washer gets dry, gets hard, and these pistons here weren't always plastic. They were brass. Brass gets affected by the water. They get pitted. Uh, they get rough on the bottom, so they lose the ability to seal between the washer and water will start to go in here. You'll hear the thing running. Not quite flushing, it's just running. Even after the flushing cycle, it continues to run because this piston cannot sit properly up against this washer. Now, yes, you can go and you can replace this washer. You can replace the diaphragm washer if the diaphragm has a hole in it. We'll talk about that in a second. So another reason it's going to continue to flush, I don't know if you can see it here, but we have this, let me, push, let me pull this closer, we have this little brass metering stud here. Right here. Okay, and that replenishes the water in the upper chamber after you pull the handle. If that gets clogged, and no water can get up top to equalize the pressure and, and push everything back down again, it's gonna to continue to run. So you have the handle issue, you have the adjustment screw issue, which is sitting up against this piston, and you have the issue with this bypass being clogged. So if it's completely clogged, the thing's gonna run. It's just gonna run, it looks gonna run full force because this leather diaphragm is going to be up off the seat and without any water coming back in to push everything down, it's just going to continue full force. Sometimes they get partially clogged. They allow some water in, but they don't allow enough water in to, to equalize the pressure. So the thing will continue to run. So yes, you can go out and get individual replacement parts for these flushometers. You can go out, remove these inserts here, and as you can see here, there's the insert. And you can go out and get a, a diaphragm. You can go out and get a piston. You can go out and get a seat washer. You can get all these components individually and replace them. My recommendation is just go out and buy the appropriate kit. This whole gizmo comes packaged in one one neat, convenient package. The only thing I will caution you is make sure the package you buy matches the rating of the flushometer. So on this particular flushometer, this is a, a 1.6 gallon flush. Okay, so you would have to go out and get a 1.6 gallon kit. And the difference between the 1.6, the 1.28, the 3.5 basically is the size of the hole in this, in this little bypass. And I know I said in the video, uh, I said that this is made out of brass. It's made out of Monel, Monel metal. And the only explanation I can give you for Mo Monel metal is that it's basically made out of the same material your, your change is made out of. T take a nickel out of your pocket and, and that's what this is made out of. Basically, Monel metal is indestructible. I mean, they used to coat the inside of water heaters with Monel metal, and the water heaters would last forever. Anyway, so let's just review a little bit. Why won't the flushometer flush? The handle's worn out. 
it doesn't reach the piston. Somebody went into the cap, turned that adjustment screw so far down that this plunger can't come up. We talked about the fact that the plunger doesn't sit up against the washer. We talked about the fact that uh, this is completely clogged, doesn't allow water to go back into the upper chamber and, and push everything back down again. And we talked about the individual components here that you can replace individually but I re recommend you go out and get a, a whole complete new kit. All right, and briefly, we're gonna talk about why this makes a big, loud bang when you hit the handle. When you hit this handle and you release it, you get this horrendous bang, and the reason that happens is because there's a hole in this diaphragm. And if you have a hole inside the diaphragm, basically what happens, instead of the water metering up slowly through this little bypass, it just travels into the upper chamber so fast that it, it whacks everything down. Everything gets pushed down quickly and you get a bang. I did a video. The last video I did was about that and I'm going to link that video up down below. So we talked about several things here. Now, after you're satisfied that you went over all these points that I uh, am talking about and you've even taken a look at the Two PDFs I'm going to leave down below this video in the description box. One of the PDFs is the troubleshooting flowchart, and one of them basically is a parts breakdown with all the part numbers. And if you're going to replace parts, I'm telling you now, go out and get OEM parts. What is OEM? Original Equipment Manufacturer Replacement Parts. Don't get aftermarket stuff. So anyway, you checked the handle, you checked everything in here, you went through the steps, you looked at the flowchart, and just real quickly, if you're having a problem with the handle, as with this, you can get the individual components. I just go out and get new handles. I don't monkey around with replacing the individual parts, but you as a homeowner may want to do that. That's up to you. Um, after you have everything back together again, you're going to have to put this cover back on again. Now, I recommend putting some waterproof silicone grease on here just to get it to, to turn easily. And actually, this, this, this rubber diaphragm washer should be enough, or supposed to be enough, that when you get this completely down and you get it completely seated, that rubber diaphragm is actually keeping the water from leaking out of here. But I will tell you guys that I've seen situations where after you whack this up as tight as you can get it you'll still see water coming out of the, coming out of here now in some cases it comes out pretty well and what i mean by pretty well is it comes out pretty fast and in some cases it's just a minute little leak and so what i recommend what i've done and i don't really advocate you do this I try the grease first. The second thing I'm going to do is on these threads, I'm going to put some pipe joint compound, mega lock, pro dope, real tough, whatever you have, but very, very sparingly on the threads, and you'll screw this back in again. If that doesn't work, you can take Teflon and clockwise, maybe one round, maybe two rounds. Don't get any of the Teflon below this thread here. You know, get it from the bottom thread up and then screw it in, whack it in. And if you see that the water has stopped, once you turn the, the valve back on again, you can get a little razor blade and trim whatever's uh, visible on top. This way it just looks pretty. But after you get all those components back in again, and let me just turn this up. It's now going to be time to, let me move this over here. It's now going to be time to um, turn the water back on again. And simply what you're going to want to do is slowly, slowly come in here counterclockwise, turn it on slowly. And this is going to continue to flush until you get this turned on all the way and the pressure can equalize top and bottom. So you'll turn that on all the way. 
And again, sometimes it may take a minute or two. Sometimes it takes five minutes to completely flush. Once you get that all back on again, you wait for it to stop. You got to hit the handle. You got to wait for it to flush and you should be back in business. And that's pretty much it guys about how this flushometer works. Now this, again, this particular flushometer was very popular in the 70s. Today you're going to see Sloan flushometers, you're going to see Zern flushometers, you're going to see Toto flushometers. Different inner workings, uh, but the concept is the same. I mean, the parts are different, but the concept and how it flushes, you know, the lifting up of the piston. Uh, I know on Sloan there isn't an adjustment screw, it's just one set. They have those flushes metered where you don't have to make any adjustments. So this was an older model and you could actually, you could, you could adjust the length of the flush with this adjustment screw, but you're not going to see that on modern flushometers. All the modern flushometers, you're not going to see this feature here. So again, it's an old one. I realize that many people don't have these in their homes. And I also realize that, you know, they're in multi-unit buildings where they have maintenance people working on them. But if you do have one and you were just wondering what's wrong with it and how to fix it, I hope I helped you out with this. Again, I'm going to leave links to the two previous videos I did down below in the description box along with the PDF for the flowchart troubleshooting breakdown and also for the parts breakdown of this particular Rex Flushometer. So folks, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. That's going to wrap up this flushometer series, which ended up being three videos, and I didn't really plan it that way, but I, I thought, let's, let me do three rather than one long one. If you have any questions, you know, guys, reach out to me in the comments below, and if you want to slam me for mi leaving something out, be my guest, go down there and, uh, you know, slam me. What could I say? Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one, folks. Uh, stay well, and... Uh, Take care, uh, especially just a word about this situation. This whole world is in now, this, this, this virus going around. It's very nerve-wracking. It's very tense. I, I urge you to be safe out there. I mean, speaking for myself, business has been flat for the last three weeks. Uh, the phones are not ringing. Uh, people do not want people in their homes, and I understand it. And frankly, when I do get a call, I have in the past two weeks, I have been out on two calls. Frankly, I'm nervous. But anyway, guys, thanks again for stopping by the channel. I will see you real soon in my next video. And uh, again, like I said, stay safe. So there you go, guys. A few reasons why your flushometer may be giving you trouble. Folks, what I'm going to do is down below this video, I'm going to leave two PDFs for this particular make and model. The troubleshooting flowchart along with the parts breakdown. So if you decide you want to dive in and make a repair like this yourself, these will make things go a lot smoother. Anyway, folks, if you're getting value out of the videos, I highly recommend you subscribe to my channel. Also, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of when I post a new video. And more importantly, hit that like button. Now, keep an eye out for one of these two videos that are going to pop up here to your right. One of them I chose, one of them YouTube chose. I want to thank everybody for stopping by my channel once again. I know you have choices when looking for videos on plumbing repair, and I'm sure glad you hit up my channel. Stay well, and until my next video, I look forward to seeing you all. Happy plumbing.